When it comes to your typical sports manga, teamwork and collective effort are two things that play a major part into the core themes and message of the story. Whether you be a team sport like volleyball and haikyuu or you be an individual sport like boxing and hajime no ippo, working with those around you to help uplift you and allow you to grow is something that many series focusing around sports like to hammer into your brain. When it comes to the dark horse of sports manga Blue Lock however, this couldn't be further from the truth. Blue Lock is a series that centers around Yoichi Isagi, a soccer player who has found himself in the midst of a larger-than-life facility in which the world's greatest strikers are being crafted and formed. And in this insane premise that takes the main character and the audience on a wild ride, an even more insane and controversial theme is hammered into us, the audience. Friendship? Teamwork? Camaraderie? All of these are words and concepts that weaklings who can't win by themselves use. Screw all of that and evolve for the sake of your own ego. But maybe I'm jumping too far ahead. Before I reach the conclusion, let me explain how Blue Lock leads both Isagi, the main character, and us to the ideal goal and promised land of winners. <laughs> The purpose of the Blue Lock facility is to take the piddly, weak, underwhelming Japan soccer culture, which has bred nothing but losers and subpar soccer players, and turn them into the most powerful and skilled strikers in the world. The only way to do something to this degree necessary is to, on a conceptual level, change the mindset towards soccer, winning, and what it even means to compete at this level with all of the characters that are taking part in this massive experience. Igo Jinpachi, the sort of leader or instructor of the Blue Lock facility, is the one guiding Yoichi and many other characters through the path of becoming a striker. Now, as his name implies, Igo is a character who believes that the sportsmanlike and downright amicable way that Japan society perpetuates through sports is unacceptable in order for the players of soccer to evolve. And as such, a good chunk of the first part of the series is dedicated to hammering in what real soccer truly is to the characters like Yoichi Sagi, who at this point has shown us that his ego, while existent, is extremely lacking in terms of its presence, only showing itself in the most dire of situations. In order for him and every other character to grow, there is going to have to be a massive overhaul of their perception of soccer and sports as a whole. And for all of those who aren't extremely familiar with Blue Lock, simply imagine this ego that I'm mentioning to be uh, the placeholder for something like self-pride or growth. The ego on the field is the desire and will to move forward and grow without any regard for anybody else on the field's expectations or feeling towards you. In order to cement this thinking into the minds of his players, Ego, the leader of the Blue Lock facility, sets up games in a way that forces them to be completely and utterly selfish in the face of adversity. If they are able to score a lot individually, regardless of the team that they are on, they will be considered a success in the Blue Lock training program. This consciously and subconsciously switches the mindset of the players of the team winning to they themselves winning as an individual, which brings out their true skills and capacity to the fullest. Without having to worry about teamwork or a collective effort, each individual character and player is able to bring out their entire skill set and play to their heart's content. And on top of that, if you want others to lend you your strength, there are two ways to go about doing this. One, you can be the strongest player on the field. If this is the case, weaker players who don't have the will to live and die by their own ego will flock to you and use you as a shield for their own insecurities and weakness. Characters such as Rin and Baro were in a position when they were first the antagonistic forces to Yuichi Isagi for a while. And due to their overwhelming skill and talent with soccer, it almost seemed natural for all those not as good as them to fall in line, lest they lose because of their pride. It is only the truly strong and truly egotistical ones and the ones that will continue to push down through the facility in order to defy that natural order and use every natural weapon at their disposal that they have to continue pushing. The second one, or the one that Yuichi Isagi uses at least in the beginning of Blue Lock, is devouring his teammates. The second one, or the one that Yuichi Isagi uses in tandem with another one, is devouring them. Teammate or enemy alike, if they have a skill set you, that you require or desire for your personal growth, consume it, take it, and make it your own, completely disregarding the need for them to even exist on the same field as you. Or, if necessary, you can devour your opponent by fully utilizing and realizing your own strengths and how those strengths play to the weakness of your your opponents. A great example of this comes from Chigiri's duel for speed with another supposed speedster on the field. When locked into a close match of speed, Chigiri falls prey to his opponent's explosive acceleration, meaning that while Chigiri can win a longer sprint, the first 10 meters or so would always go to his opponent.
opponent due to their training and their natural talents this isn't something that can be overcome within the span of one singular game so instead of fruitlessly trying to close this gap via something intangible and non-existent such as hard work or spirit Chiguri simply plays to his advantage by kicking the ball at full strength out into the field with no one to pass the setup is there as i clearly stated in a 10 meter dash the opponent beats Chiguri clearly but what if that dash is turned into a 50 meter sprint well Chiguri, using his knowledge of both himself and his opponent pushes forward at max speed catching up to and overcoming the acceleration problem that had been plaguing him in the match before and as a result scores a goal showing an awakening of lane potential is there if you have the tools and mindset necessary to force it open but these are simply the ones that we see rather early on in the likes of blue lock if you're like isagi who is not the naturally gifted character type of the series or if you don't have the natural height of a player you need the natural build the strength etc etc you do have a third option in order to acquire the skill set and resources that your fellow teammates have you subjugate them, manipulate them, use them. This is the means by which Isangi used Baro, a player much too rowdy and egotistical to be tamed by mere conversation or convincing to his advantage and success in his game. Because of the hunger to evolve and grow and the sight needed to lay out his path, Yuichi was able to look at the field from an objective point of view, removing his own perspective from the mix and seeing the field from the eyes of every single individual, essentially giving him omniscience on the field when he is in this state of being. This unlimited vision, his natural talent, allowed Yuichi to use the perspective of Baro, who refused to cooperate with his own team, even when being shut down and his opponents against each other, and uses his one teammate that actually trusts him to score and win on their own. The greatest examples of this comes from the specific instance in which Yoichi uses Baro as a decoy to shield his own presence from the other team and dash ahead, catching everyone, even Baro, his own teammates, off guard and allows him to continue to score. As I list off all of these ways to grow, you may start to realize that these things don't sound like anything another sports series really pushed. Well, personal development development is always something important in any series growth of the unit over growth of your personal self is always seen to be the objective truth within certain sports series whether you be Kuroko no Basket, Haikyuu, Eye Shield 21 or even Hajime no Ippo but in Blue Lock that theme is flipped on its head a little bit personal growth and team growth aren't two separate things Team growth can only happen when one or more superstars, one or more egotists demand growth of their team and force an evolution where there would not already be one. This concept is one that has coined the term chemical reactions in the world of Blue Lock. These reactions are simply when a character is able to take an already existing skill, unique trait that they have, and transform it into a deadly weapon to surpass their opponent. These reactions, however, cannot be used alone or in a vacuum and require the combination of multiple people's skill set, objective points, and knowledge of their other teammates and opponents, all in order to culminate into ability that surpasses anything the individual could have done alone. But don't look at chemical reactions and simply perceive it as your typical teamwork because it is far far from that by evolving at a constant rate and consuming everyone who you can your opponents and teammates alike will struggle and resist this domination all in order to grow and evolve themselves which has led to some of the most powerful combinations of chemical reactions that we've seen in the series of blue lock which leads me right back to the beginning statement I made in the video. Puny, mundane concepts such as teamwork should be thrown to the wayside when playing true soccer. Everyone on the field exists for your sake. Every play you make is for the sake of your own ego. Move, fight, manipulate, evolve, all just so that you can move forward and win. These themes are things that I think are pretty revolutionary in the sports genre when it comes to manga. In all honesty, I've rarely seen another series push selfishness and self-development as much as this series has, and that's definitely a refreshing and interesting twist on the typical stuff we'd see in most sports series. Even some of the ones that are my favorite, like Haikyuu and Hajime no Ippo, do tend to stick to this idea that teamwork uh, kind of supersedes everything else, which is a fine sentiment, but seeing Blue Lock kind of contrast this with its own themes and ideas is something that's really interesting to see. If you guys did enjoy this video and want me to cover Blue Lock, whether that be a more detailed look at individual characters such as Rin, Baro, or the main character Uichi himself, or cover larger topics with larger videos like this one covering themes and ideas as I did in this, let me know in the comment section down below. In any case, subscribe and hit the bell if you guys did enjoy this video. And as always, this is Broken Ronin, signing off.